Hey there, welcome to another video. Uh, working on a 4L60E, it's out of a 97 GMC 1500 truck. Uh, it was rebuilt by another shop. They did an absolutely horrible job. And this video is gonna further expand upon, uh, you know, how poorly they did when it comes to rebuilding this transmission. So uh, I have a teardown video uh, that shows you all the carnage and you know, all the, uh, the things that they didn't do correctly. And so if you want like all the details, the full picture, check that video out. It was published probably about a week or so before this one. Well, anyway, um, go back together with it, have the valve body all put together and they had installed part of a Sonic's HP1 performance pack and I say part because they didn't ream the stator support or pump cover for the oversized valve. Um, you know, we have that in there now. We're about to vacuum test it. And I had put all the things in the valve body back that did come that were, you know, legitimately from that kit, as well as a few other things that we needed to do, including the uh, forward and reverse abuse kits uh, that I had purchased those separately and installed them. I mean, they come with the kit, you know, the HP1 pack, but for whatever reason, that shop did not install those valves. Well, anyway, um, they installed um, a quote unquote heavy duty two, three shift valve, supposedly from Sonics. However, um, the one thing they didn't do is drill the little, um, you know, one eighth of an inch hole here at this location to, you know, complete the job, which the whole purpose of installing this valve is so that you can have access to your overruns in uh, D1 and D2, as well as D3, you know, when you're manually shifting. But that's not why I'm making the video. I'm making the video because I've come upon what I believe is another counterfeit Sonics valve. And I'm making this video because this particular valve looks like a Sonics valve. I mean, they got the color almost right. I mean, I say almost because you'd have to have a legitimate Sonics valve next to it to really tell the difference. And the valve uh, that I'm referring to is this one right here. So... In my left hand, I have a legitimate Sonics Avenue 2 3 shift valve. I pulled it right out of this little package here. This is the part number 77754 41. Okay, freshly out of the package. And then we have this valve. Okay, so what I'm going to show you now is why I believe this is counterfeit. So when we measure the diameter of the balance spool, we get. 394 thousandths of an inch. And we'll measure the uh, outboard most spool. We get 435 thousandths of an inch. When I measure this one, I'm getting 390 thousandths of an inch. And then the uh, outboard spool is only 430. So I made a video earlier that covered uh, fraudulent or counterfeit heavy duty 2-3 shift valves. Okay, as you can see, this one is actually legitimate. You know, it's cut the correct width on the balance spool, but it's on this outboard most spool here that is grossly undersized. So how I discovered this was through vacuum testing. So... <clears throat> When I did the vacuum testing for the inboard spool and the uh, outboard spool for the 2-3 shift and inboard 2-3 shuttle, I was getting 10 inches and 4 inches of vacuum respectively. I mean, there's just no way. Um, there's no way a Sonics valve would produce that low of a signal. So I'm going to throw this back in there and we'll do a quick vacuum test so I can show you what kind of readings we were getting or I was getting with this valve in there. Pull that manual valve out because it's in the way. All right, going to turn on the machine and then we'll show you. I already calibrated the machine. Um, how you want to do that is just take your test uh, hose or lead, stick it in the calibration receptacle here, fire it up, and then adjust your um, bleeder valve until you have a steady reading of five inches of calibrated vacuum. And then plug the orifice that's right here on the side of the block. That will cause the needle to jump up toward 25 inches. You want it reading exactly 25 inches. So you adjust your, this is the bleed valve, excuse me. This is the pump valve. You adjust the bleeder valve to get it to 25 inches of vacuum. And then you adjust the pump valve to get your baseline calibrated five inches without you putting a finger there. 
anyway, I just wanted to hastily cover that so that you know that there is a calibration procedure that needs to be performed. All right, valves in. So the circuitry that we're gonna test here, it's gonna be this location right here. And I'm just gonna mark it. This here, okay, that's your inboard location. And then your outboard location is gonna be right here. And I apologize for the wind. Weather doesn't really want to cooperate with filming, but you know, I can't put the bill off. You know, I can't not get this done because of you know wind. All right, so we got ten inches. Let me zoom in on that so you can at least see the uh, gauge. So that's 10 inches. And then now we're gonna do the outboard spool. I mean, it's still pulling some vacuum, but obviously you can't let this go out the door with only 10 inches of vacuum. Okay, now we're gonna do the outboard position. Sorry about that. So we're pulling five inches. So, Obviously, that's no good. No good. I uh, shut the machine off. You zoom back out. And you see the valve body. Then we're going to yank this valve out of here. And it comes right out. Now we'll go ahead and put the actual Sonics heavy duty 2-3 shift valve into the bore. And this might require a little bit of persuasion because, well, it's um, correctly sized. There we go. So now we'll retest. So the two locations. All right, that's more in line of what we would expect. That's 23 inches of vacuum. Again, let me zoom in on the gauge so you can see what's going on. The 23 inches, no hands. I think I gotta use effort and strength to pry the little block off. I'm going to put the shuttle valve in, too. There we go. So that's 18 and a half inches of vacuum. Again, perfectly fine. And then if you wanted to test the shuttle valve outboard, just put your solenoid back in. And then you're just going to test here. All right, we're holding eh, 16 inches of vacuum. That's pretty good. All right, let me shut this machine off. So yet another counterfeit valve is on the market. Previous shop, not knowing and you know what the hell they're doing to begin with probably purchased this on eBay for five bucks, 10 bucks, something like that. Uh, this valve costs upwards of anywhere from 40 to $50. Um, I think my hard part supplier sells them for like 45 bucks plus tax. So anyway, that's the story. Uh, a lot of counterfeit products on the market and given what we've already seen with this transmission and the work or lack thereof that's been done to it, I'm not the least bit surprised to find that it has a counterfeit Sonics 2-3 uh, shift valve installed.
All right, guys, just wanted to bring awareness. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, go ahead and leave them below. Thank you again.